I'm Linda Ann Smith, video creator for ColorArt.com. I'll be painting a portrait today with Twinkling H2Os. They're hard pan watercolors, so the first thing you have to do is activate them with water. Some artists recommend that you let them set five minutes before you start using them, but I like to wait at least ten because that gives me a more intense color, and if I need a less intense color, I just add water. So I'll let these set while I work on my watercolor block. Now I'm using a uh, Strathmore watercolor block. I like watercolor blocks because they are easy to work on. You don't usually have to stretch them. However, if you put a lot of water on them, they are going to buckle. So be aware of that. This is a nine by 12 inch, 140 pound cold press paper. At the bottom left of the screen, you'll see that I have on a Lazy Susan, uh, some Twinkling H2Os. These are the Luminous Faces line. Uh, they come in a set. So that makes it easy to order. You don't have to go in and look up each color. I'm a messy artist, so I go into the computer and write down the names and print out little tags and put, them, put the tip of the little paper under each color because a lot of times, because I'm messy, I end up with paint on the bottom and it obscures the label. Plus, it's awkward once you have water in these to pick them up and try to look at the bottom to see what the color is. You should be aware that looking at the color and painting the color are two different things. It may paint an entirely different color than you think it's going to. So making color swatches when you first get your H2Os is a really good idea. When I start to paint, they're off camera laying right beside me so I can refer to that before I dip my paintbrush into a paint. When I get a drawing that I like, I'll often trace it on a transparency and then use tracing paper to place it on the canvas. Now, there's a couple of things about this tracing paper you should notice. Want to, you will definitely want to get grease-free and wax-free tracing paper. This tracing paper also says that it's erasable, but that depends on the eraser that you use quite often. Place the tracing paper under your transparency and on top of your watercolor block, being sure that you have the dark side down. The transparency goes on top of the tracing paper, line it up the way you want it, and then hold it very firmly with one hand while you trace with the other hand. When you're finished tracing, lift the tracing paper and the transparency from the watercolor block. If you missed any important lines, just replace the transparency, line it up, and slide the tracing paper between the transparency and the watercolor block. Do you see those smudged places there? on her arms, that's where I tried to erase with a pencil eraser. A kneaded eraser, an art gum eraser, or a white drawing eraser might work better, but I just don't trust erasers with uh, tracing paper. You can destroy the integrity of your paper if you erase too much, and it'll really knot up your paper and make a mess. So be careful about that. I'm going to use an eraser that I think will help take some of this smudge up and then I'll just blend it into the watercolor. And I'm being very gentle as I use this. Anytime I'm doing watercolor I use two cups of water, one for dipping the paintbrush and the other for cleaning the paintbrush. Dipping the paintbrush one is for making your watercolor thinner. You don't want to use the dirty water on your watercolor paints. You can actually purchase divided water containers especially made for watercolors. I'm using clear water to cover the entire drawing that I've done and this is risky because it, it's going to buckle a little bit. Uh, when the paper dries the buckle will go away but while you're painting that makes it kind of difficult so I'll show you how I try to solve those things. I'll begin her face with pink cloud from the Luminous Faces set and when I put watercolor on my brush I always go to my nonstick mat, and you won't be able to see that because it's off on the side away, but I go to the nonstick mat, smear it out a little bit, and make sure that the consistency is right. If it's not, I add a little water. Or if it happens to be too thin, I go back and, and stroke the pink cloud or whatever color I'm using again. But here I'm just going to go all over her eyes, her nose, her mouth, everything with the pink cloud. While that's still damp, I have dipped into the Mandarin Citrus color that's on the top Lazy Susan there. It looks like it's kind of orangish, but as I said, you have to have color swatches so you'll know what color it's going to be when you put it on your canvas or on your paper. So uh, I 
took that all over her hair and I want to bring that color down into the sleeves. And I realized I forgot to paint her hands so I'm going to have to go back and take care of that also. I don't plan for her sleeves to be yellow but pulling that yellow down into the sleeves causes this painting to have more unity. It looks like it holds together better. When I get finished that's going to be important. I mixed just a little bit of the blushing caramel with the uh, pink cloud for her hands. When this dries, it's going to be a whole lot softer color than what you see here. But the first layer is not my final layer, and I'll probably do some more layers on her face. In fact, I'm going to go up here right now and go around some of these areas that should be a little darker. Her face is not completely dry yet, but it's it's damp so it allows me to blend the colors without letting them spread everywhere. Any time that you put two colors that are wet when they touch each other they're going to bleed into each other. So it takes a little practice to know how damp you need your paper before you put in another color and that can vary from different supplies and different paints. Uh, it's just practice and play with them until you get used to them. These are blending together fairly nicely and I'm trying to kind of leave the nose out and the eyes out a bit when I'm going over her face with this second layer. If you've watched any of my videos where I'm painting before you know that I allow myself to change my mind but what I have in mind right now is that when I get through, when I get finished painting. I'm going to go back and make these lines really crisp that I have drawn in there because they're not beautiful lines and they're not soft lines and it's going to be hard to cover it with the watercolor. So I'm going to, at least at this point, I think I'm going to work with that. I don't know if you can tell it on the screen but the, the paper has buckled and that's causing little puddles in places and it's not, uh, the paint isn't going where I want it to. So I went back with a paper napkin and just siphoned up some of that water. You can actually just touch the napkin in it and it will take some of that water away and then I actually dabbed on the paper in some areas. So now I'm going to the bottom to where the table is and I'm using cinnamon stick from the Luminous Faces to uh, paint the table in. I like this azurite color a lot. That's not in the Luminous Faces. It's a separate color. And I'm going to lay in some of the azurite on both sides here because I think I'll make her sweater, even the sleeves where I've got the uh, other colors, I think I'll make it a bluish color. That is a nice contrast with the yellow in the hair and the kind of uh, flesh tones or, or soft oranges, if you will, in the face. I'm picking up some of this azurite color and moving it from the puddling that's happening right here and moving it to other areas on the paper. Now it keeps trying to puddle because there's a, a little uh, warp in the paper there. And the best way to solve that is not to use a block. I like to use blocks, but the, not to use a block and to actually stretch your watercolor paper. Uh, that'll be a whole new video but to actually stretch your watercolor paper onto a watercolor board. Another way is to buy 300 pound watercolor paper. 300 pound doesn't tend to buckle, uh, but it's very pricey. I'm going to confess to you that I find this extremely challenging to do this watercolor, not because I don't know how to do it, but because I'm impatient and I tend to go back before the the colors are dry enough. So you might have watched some of my other videos where I said that usually I have uh, three or four canvases going at one time. That's kind of hard to do when I'm videotaping back and forth and I have so many splits in the, the uh, videos when I do that. So I'm trying to stick with one tonight and I find that extremely challenging. I feel the urge to continue painting when I know that I need to stop and let it dry. So I'm going to go and make a cup of hot tea and when I come back it should be dry enough to work again. Okay, we're still a little damp but dry enough to work with and I'm going to use some more cinnamon stick 
color from the luminous faces. Just because it says luminous faces doesn't mean you have to use it on the face. So I'm adding a second layer of the cinnamon stick from the luminous faces set uh, right under her arm because one of the first things I learned in painting was that where two surfaces come together, such as a vase sitting on a table or a arm resting on the bed or whatever, uh, that's going to leave a shadow area because two surfaces are coming together. So that's where you should have the darkest area. I'm going back in with some Bolivian blue and working on this sweater area again. Uh, it's a good idea not to try to define everything. Uh, let the viewer's eye play. Let them decide where some of the things are. Focus mostly on the area that you want to be the center of interest, which in this case will be the face. Um, I don't want someone to look at my painting and just focus on the sweater. I want them to look at her face. So that's where I'm going to focus most of my time, if not with paint, later with ink. I have the cinnamon stick warm brown at the bottom and I'm thinking that maybe I want to bring a little of that kind of color up into the hair and use it as shadows. Now normally my shadows I make them a cool color but I'm going to try this warm color. I'm experimenting. That's always what my art's about. And I'm going to try the warm color up into her hair. So I'm wetting it with uh, water. It has a little bit of blue in it there because I picked up some blue uh, from when I stroked over an area. But uh, I'm going to go back in with some of this mocha rose and try some shadows. One of the things that I find in watercolor is that it can easily be overworked fast. Now, in my acrylic and mixed media works, if I think that I've gone too far and it's just horrible, then usually I need to go one more step. But that doesn't happen in watercolors for me, at least. Um, when I go that one more step, a lot of times I've ruined it. So backing off and disciplining myself not to overwork it is a huge part of doing watercolors. And since I'm trying for color balance here, I might also mention that uh, realism is not necessarily important to me. What is important is that I get a good composition and that I balance everything and that it feels unified, that it feels like uh, there's some repetition. All of the elements of composition I'm looking at. But I don't always achieve good composition. When I critique my own work, I always think it's a little too tight. I think I draw too tight. I think I paint too tight. And loosening up is one of the things that I'm working on. But I'm afraid I'm not achieving that in this particular uh, composition. And sometimes what we admire in other people's work isn't what happens in our own work. And if we'll let it flow, let it uh, come out of, out of us just naturally, I guess what I'm trying to say is not to try, not to strive for making things look like someone else does. Let it be your own individual work. And as you practice, things will improve. And for me, watercolor is kind of like playing the piano. I used to play the piano, but I can't anymore because I haven't practiced. Well, I used to do lots of watercolors, but I haven't practiced that a lot lately. So I'm going back to it and playing with it again. And sometimes you have to relearn. I've just added the colors Lucky Apple, that yellowish color, to her eyes, and now I'm going over it with some azurite, which yellow and, and blue make green, so her eyes are turning a lovely shade of green. On her lips, I'm using pink azalea, and on the upper lip to make it a little darker because it'll be in shadow. Uh, when this pink azalea dries, I'll work in a little bit of that mocha rose. While I have this pink azalea on my brush, I'm going to go up and dampen her cheeks and uh, just put in a layer that, and wet and wet and give her a little blush on her cheeks. Using the wet and wet method will give a soft blending of these tones without any hard edges. However, now that I've done this, I realize that at the bottom of the water there, I'm probably going to get a little line when that dries. So that's just something I'm going to live with. Again, I'm experimenting. I'm practicing again, trying to hone my skills 
in watercolor. If I were doing this as a commission, I would probably do this type of work as a study on the block before I moved on to a heavier paper. And that way I can kind of work out the kinks as I go, see what I like, see what I don't like. Here I go with that mocha rose to darken the upper lip and letting it bleed slightly down onto the, the lower lip because it's still just a little bit damp and that'll give a shadow. So here's where I am and I'm starting to get muddy in places so I'm going to quit and start using my pen to outline. These are Pigma Micron pens and they have permanent ink in them so that uh, if you wanted to draw with these and then put watercolor over them that would be fine. You might let them dry just a little bit before you put water over them. I like to use these over the watercolor in the last stages because I can get really fine details. I'm going to go over some of these lines just to make them a little bolder and a little smoother and uh, to enhance the areas that I want to be my center of interest, particularly the eyes, which have a lot of detail in them. And it's easy to acquire that detail with this fine point pen. I'm not going to go over every single line that uh, I placed in the beginning because as I said the paint has taken care of a lot of that and after I finish with the line work I'll double check my uh, colors and the whole scheme of things and see how it looks and I probably usually go back and dab a little paint just here and there. Check out the description box below where I list my channel and Color Arts channel and uh, Color Art has something going on all the time on Facebook and on they have an open studio and they have a blog so there's always tutorials and something for you to visit there. I want to thank you for watching and stay tuned until the end so you can see the final product.